but I had to deal with this guy for the last few days, but let's get into why software is hard. And it's not the code. The code is arguably one of the easier parts of the job. Say you're a solo dev and you're just building out an API for whoever. You have your routes over here, your controllers over here, and your methods or functions over here that's gonna call. Your controller controls the flow. Your business logic remains within each of these individual functions. There's an interface here, so these two are in agreement and there's no discrepancy. Well, so let's say a second developer joins. Now you have to do a readme or you handhold that person to onboard. Then you also have your Git process, right? You had this before for yourself, but this is the process that you can have to develop for the rest of the team. Now you and this other developer are just kind of like working together, having a very close conversation and things are getting done. Let's add a couple more developers. With a larger team, you now have a planning process. People usually follow agile and then you have siloing, which means your developers have a specific domain knowledge on some particular area. Now to solve siloing, you're gonna need to have documentation, but we all know that documentation is probably one of the hardest parts of the project because no one ever wants to do it and it's always done last. Cool, now let's say your API yeah, it gets a little bit mature, you want to do some data retention. Now add a DB of some sort, add an ORM of some sort. Now let's say this developer is gone, right? Went to another job, only cared about the money, something like that, okay? This person did not do any documentation, did not do any communication, and now you lose this amount of knowledge and someone else has to pick up the pace. Cool, so let's add another team that's actually using your APIs. They start to use it, everything's great, and then all of a sudden, someone makes a change and it breaks production. You do some debugging and then you realize you need to add some more information, so you add some logging, and then you realize you need to figure out if there are any errors early before anyone else sees it, so you add some monitoring. You have to make sure things don't happen again in the future, so you add some postmortems into the process, and then you also add more tests. Now, your service is getting popular, so the traffic goes up, so you realize you have to scale a little bit. Now you have to involve the DevOps or Infra team to help you with that or you do it yourself. Meanwhile, your client teams also multiply and they're asking you if you can implement more features. Meanwhile, that problem that killed production earlier, you're still trying to debug it, but you can't because there's so much tech debt in the way. You might be asking, how did that bug get to production? Why weren't their reviews done? Why weren't their tests written? There were, there was just less than 100% coverage and everyone is drowning, so they don't have time to do a proper review. Then you try to consolidate a lot of the opinions and the reviews and come up with a style guide. Meanwhile, that one problem is still happening. And so your PM, your business people, and your VP are angry and they're asking you what's going on. So then to make sure you don't go to production or you detect things early and fix things early, you add on call. Then the government's coming at you. So you have to start doing privacy stuff. You're expanding a bit more. So then you have to start doing internationalization, which means you have to work with translation teams. Multiply that by a couple of teams who you have to interface with and it's harder for you to move quickly because now you're monolithic. Now you have to break it into microservices, but people are arguing about what to use. Meanwhile, all this is happening. And there's also a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, hope that was informative.